Welcome to Your Coolest Life, our talk series. Today we're invited at uh, Christopher Kager's mm -hmm. home, um, an Austrian actor um, based in Los Angeles mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. When did you move here, Christopher? I moved here, I moved to the States actually six years ago, about six years ago. And I moved down here to LA two and a half years ago. Cool. Yeah. And we, Ernst and I, really love the story of this guy. Like, you did so much, you put so much effort in to come here mm -hmm. to work as an actor right mm -hmm. now, and so listen to this guide, to this story. Um, but let's start at the beginning, Christopher. You are Styrian, like Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Actually, we have the dream to talk to Arnold Schwarzenegger mm -hmm. one day. Well, I can make that happen, too. Um, <laughs> but your story is, is kind of, like, similar from mm -hmm. the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, do you sometimes feel you're like in his shoes or you follow his footprints? Well, pretty much because in his case he was the same. So when he was a kid, he knew what he wanted. So he always talks about have a vision. Don't, don't, don't think about what other people want you to do. Don't do what your parents or your teachers say do. Do what you want to do. So that's the most important thing. You actually really have to do what you want to do. So, and then in my case, it was the same. When I was a kid, I was dreaming about going to Hollywood. I mean, I grew up really in a small village in Austria, you know, it's like not many people and... Where did the dream come from? How did you um, think about Hollywood? I thought about Hollywood uh, because of Schwarzenegger. I mean, we did like, like, my, my uncle had a camera, you know, he was from Germany, he came, so I did like, like karate stuff and he filmed us and I was like, I like this, you know? And then watching movies, watching Schwarzenegger, figuring out he's from Austria, I was like, well, he can do it, I can do it. So I'm just going to keep going, keep going. I work hard. I don't care what other people say, what other people think. It's about what you think. And in the end, if you really believe in yourself, don't give up, work hard, just go for it. Mm -hmm. And Why quite, not? quite recently you even uh, met him, right? Mm -hmm. I met him, yeah. And I met Schwarzenegger. Him? Yeah, I met Schwarzenegger. So we went to a restaurant, we had lunch, and it was nice talking to him. So we talked in German. And as Austrian or Styrian? Austrian. So <laughs> Styrian. It was like our accent, our which dialect, know, everything. I yeah, so exactly. Much. So it was nice. It was like, and because we talked before, I usually don't really get nervous. But when I stood in front of him, I was like, whoa. So we talked and talked. And he was so nice. We talked in German. And he was like, wait. We, we, are, we were neighbors, you know, I've been there because my, my mom's grave is like close by and then I told him my whole life story, he wished me best of luck, everything and then he invited me again out for lunch and I can always like meet up with him, he's like really a nice guy I mean, I like what his path, his career path is like amazing, what he has made, whatever he wanted to do he made it. When he came here, he barely spoke English. His English was bad. But he made bodybuilding big. He is like a legend, still, for everybody. Then he was the best paid actor at his time. And then he became the governor as an Austrian guy who grew up like also in, in, in Tal by Graz, like small thing. And I was like, well, he can do it. I can do it too. And he always says too, you know, you have to have your visions and do your stuff. Mm. And just believe in yourself. Mm. Visualize it. It's all in your mind. It's like you can really do anything you want. Anything is possible. And like he said too, he loves when people say, uh, you can't do this, you can't do that. Nobody has ever done this. Because then when he does it, it's the first time everybody has done it. Anybody has done it, you know, so... Mm. Well, come on, sure. keep going. But still, I mean, there are so many kids growing up in small villages in Austria mm -hmm. or wherever in the world. Mm -hmm. But what do you think, why did you make this big step and why to acting? What was uh, appealing to you? Acting is because when I was a kid, that's another reason. I like to be a pilot. I, I, I'd have like to be a lawyer. I'd like action stuff. As an actor, I mean, still you pretend to be that stuff, but when you get into a role, you actually study that stuff. So I played police officers here, I played detectives here, I played military here, and you get the training first, you know, before you shoot, you get the training for a couple of weeks, and you, you learn pretty much everything, you know, 
and it's like so versatile and you see everything so it's like it's not monotone it's like I, I can't do a desk job or anything like this and I wanted to be everything and in acting you can live those lives mm. Did you go to acting school already in Austria? Uh, in Austria I just did some classes when I was in Vienna in between and then when I came here I did like uh, when I lived in San Francisco I did uh, drama classes so at college and then I moved down here and I did more classes there. But you have never thought of becoming an actor in Austria or Germany? Uh, no because in Austria it's more about theater and the industry is not as huge and Germany has a good movie industry but I didn't want to act in German mm. I wanted to do it in English so that's why I first also thought uh, going to England so I went back and forth to England too actually to improve my English and because I didn't need a visa it was easier but yeah so how did you get the e-card because many people are thinking about that so in my case it was like this so I went back and forth to Austria and then I really the first time when I came here, it was 21, two weeks for just visiting. I liked it. Being allowed first time to drink a beer? Uh, 21, Exactly, right? 21 here, yeah, that's true, yeah. So, and then the second time with uh, 22, I was here for about three months, and I thought I can just find somebody here who can sponsor my visa, you know, like, that's how it works. They have to fill out papers, sponsor your visa, their employer, and then I wanted to change my status into a green card at some point which didn't work out because when you're here as a tourist you can't do it you can't change your status so after three months I mean I enjoyed the three months I went to every movie studio I met friends I went to all the beaches I checked out every place every single place so you here. got a feeling for and California yeah, I, I, I got a feeling for California and I intensified my dream so I went back to Austria and then I was like so I gotta figure out a way how to get there. First, I was like, I need something different. So I went to Vienna. So I lived in Vienna. I was like, maybe I can do something there and make more connections and stuff. So I got a job there. I mean, I, I owned a, a, a video rental store. So DVD, we, we sold DVDs and so too. And spending time watching a lot of movies. <laughs> spending time watching movies, getting into it more. Then besides, I took classes. It was easy in, in Vienna. Then my partner, who had to store with, was a singer, so we did like, even, I got into music and so too, you know, so we did this, and we were like, maybe that's like, getting us over. So we had a manager, but this manager was, I don't know, not reliable, and at some point he was gone, and we got into fights, and so it doesn't work, it didn't work out. So then I started going back and forth to England, and try it i mean i would have gotten a job and everything i actually actually everything was done and then in england so i was about to move i get this call that i got that family as an au pair because i applied for this too i never thought about that i can actually take care of kids but this was a different thing because she was single and she had a kid that was uh, 15 years old a boy and she traveled a lot because of her job so she was gone and she just needed somebody to take care of the house and uh, there was a pool and I mean it was a nice life you know but it wasn't mine so I was like enjoying it but I still had my dreams in mind and also what she told me why she hired me because she likes people who have dreams because when I had my interview Skype interview with her and I told her my whole story I want to go to LA I want to be an actor and she likes people like this you know and that was one of the reasons she hired me so my contract was for one year I love this fact so much like doing the au pair thing but mm -hmm. because if you would like set up a career plan mm -hmm. you would never have put in like au pair for half a year right to stay no, there exactly, but it just yeah. happened it, 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 it happened it, it was meant to be it was the perfect family and then so I got there so I worked for her so we extended my contract we extended my contract and in between I mean I met somebody up there you know it was nice we were really in love we got married and I got my green card through marriage, which I probably should not have done. I mean, I could have gotten it through work too, but I would have to extend another year. So I got my green card through marriage. Everything was fine. Everything was perfect. Then we moved on here from San Francisco. Unfortunately, she didn't like LA, even though she knew what I wanted to do from getting on. But we just, it was too much drama. It didn't work out, unfortunately. But she's happy now. I'm happy now. 
everything is fine, I have my green card, I can do whatever I want and mm. I'm here doing, living my dream. Big question, like six years ago you came here mm -hmm. with the dream to become an actor. actor. What did people back home in Austria say think. to you? Oh wow, like, I mean... What did they think? Uh, well, the thing is like a lot of people, they say nice things, but they, they say don't mean it. They, they don't mean it, you know, because they're like, Hollywood? You? From Austria? Small town? Huh? How do you want to do this? I mean, come on. And it was like Schwarzenegger made it. Yeah, but he was a bodybuilder. But at this point, he was nothing either. You know, he came here, he barely spoke English, but he made it happen. It's just a work ethic. It's just there are six rules he always talks about, you know. Believe in yourself. Trust yourself. Dig deep down. Like, actually really do what you really want to do. It's your life not anybody else's life, so I don't care what other people say. Even friends were mad at me because I left Austria. And I was like, I mean, you, you knew that's my dream, and I'm doing this. So... What did your family say? Did they support you? Yeah, my family supported me. First, I mean, when I was a kid, they didn't believe it. They thought I'm not like... When was the point they did believe? Uh, let's say like this, my uncle, who owns actually our family business, he always believed me and he was always backing me up and behind me and everything. My mom, I think she did believe me, but she didn't want to because she didn't want me to go away so far, you know. So that's why she's always like calling me every day, is everything okay, always nervous. I'm like, mom, I'm, I'm a grown up man, I mean, come on, you know, you don't have to worry about me, so, yeah. But my family is always behind me and that's very important to me because I love my family, I love everybody and for me the most important thing is family. Mm. Were there any like big obstacles in your way coming here, being in Hollywood right now? Oh, I have not just one or two. When I was in Austria I ran into scams so I got job offers from here and I thought, oh, that's nice, they're doing my visa stuff and everything. And they sent me a contract, and it looked legit, you know, signed by a lawyer and everything. And then they were like, um, the only thing is, like, you would have to pay for the flight ticket. So transfer that money. And we returned that money. They even sent me pictures of the building I would have worked at and everything. You know, everything was legit. So I did this, and then you never hear from them about it. So, I lost a lot of money because of that, and obstacles, it's like, a lot of people say, you can't make it, you have an accent, I got my first movie part because of my accent, mm -hmm. I got my second movie part because I played a German soldier back in time, it was a time travel movie, mm -hmm. so I spoke English and German, so, it's like, really, mm -hmm. look at Schwarzenegger, he has, like, such a thick accent, mm -hmm. it's like, really, mm -hmm. so Sometimes it's... Just turn upside down your weaknesses and they become your exactly strength, right? exactly and i i don't i i really don't care what other people say mm. i do what i want to do and i believe in myself i work hard harder than anybody else and nobody can outwork me mm. so i'm really doing what i can do mm. and i i really i visualize my goals i write down my goals and it's going well of course you have sometimes days uh, you're down and everything but the important thing is you get back up. Mm. If it's your passion, you're gonna get exactly. back up. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. If it's just about the money, you will stop. No, no. For me, it's acting. In the first for, place. for me, it's not about fame or money. I just love doing it. You know. What do you love the most about acting? Uh, it's just like because you play so many different characters, and you prepare, and it's just like you're there and you do it, and and it's really. Do you have any favorite role, like being in a um, movie or? Comedy. Uh, what I I do like uh, like drama, thriller, and action. What I like first, I didn't see myself as that comedy guy, you know. And then I got parts in comedy shows. And the funny thing is, I was uh, a huge fan of Will Smith, you know. So I watched like Fresh Prince of Bel Air all okay. the time. And um, then I was in a comedy show. It's a Disney show, and I played an agent, you know, with a suit and gun and everything but it was a comedy so I had to play a little foolish and everything and the funny thing is Alfonso Ribeiro who plays Carlton 
was my director. No way, and, I love him. And, and, <laughs> and he comes up and I was like, you got to be kidding me right now. So we hugged each other and I told him. And then I met Will Smith and we talked about this, you know, so it's like real, Will Smith is really nice too. Unfortunately, I met him that day when his dad passed away. Okay. But but he he didn't know at this point. Later on, his uh, wife Jada came, and then they left, and he went to Philadelphia for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But but such a nice guy, Will Smith. So we, we we talked about Alfonso and everything. Yeah. Uh, so you meet these guys just regularly. Yeah. The Hollywood stuff. Yeah, you meet those. Uh, it's like great. always. Uh, How does your like week or day usually look like? My day looks like I work out a lot. I go to the gym. Then I do go to classes, acting classes. You always keep this up. Then uh, audition-wise, you have auditions, you know. It always pops up. You never know when. So your agent contacts you. Sometimes even the same day. And when I work, it sometimes, it always depends. Like I had the other week, uh, I was on a pilot four days. Call time was 5 a.m., so I had to get up at 3 a.m., oh, no. and I came home, and we worked like 12 hours every day, and then I came home at like 8, because it was an hour away from here, and yeah, that's when I shoot, it's like long days, you know, mm. and then on well, weekends, I go for dinner with my girl and stuff like this, mm. or hikes, and then... Doing a lot of workout, obviously, right? I, I, I love working out. I, love, <laughs> I, I really I love going to the gym. I love swimming. How can you love that? Like, um, practicing these repetitive things. I used to be a pro soccer player. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I, got I, I, I grew up playing soccer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And I got injured a lot. And, mm-hmm. you know, like when you snap your ligament, mm-hmm. the crossing ligament, you mm-hmm. have like f- at least five to six months just rehab. Yeah, and it's, yeah. It was so boring for me just... Gaining weight by yeah. you know, going to the gym and being on the what I say table. what I say it's like for me it's not about losing or gaining for me it's about the lifestyle you actually devote yourself to so I don't count calories or I mean I keep my lifestyle healthy so I work out a lot I like working out I really I go to the gym I like hiking I like running I go paddleboarding surfing whatever I want to do I do it you know so that's important to me. Then I keep my diet pretty healthy. I do like 80-20, like drinking beers and so it's like my 20%. You know? <laughs> but but live your life, be happy. Great, Christopher. It was nice talking to you. That was this guy is the proof you can do anything you really want to. You if can. you work hard and exactly. if you believe in it. Thanks so much for your time. Yeah. Great time with you, man. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Hope you enjoyed your beer. Cheers, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>